David Boyle, and I'm quitting alcohol. So it's just been go, go, go today since I fucking got home at 4am and slept till 11am. My fucking graphic designer, Matt O'Neill, the guy who does all my posters and all that sort of bullshit, great comedian, fucking good graphic designer as well. He's probably moved past the fucking stage where he needs to do posters for me. He did them at the start when he first started comedy as like a helping hand and he was doing a lot of people's fucking posters and he sort of moved past it as he rapidly overtook everyone in comedy but he still does mine as like a favour to me and I said just charge me, charge me whatever you want. I'm willing to pay, I understand it's work, just invoice me and I'll fucking pay up, I just need the shit done. And he's like, I won't charge you full price, man. I'll just charge you a little bit. How does 200 sound? I'm like, what? For a fucking poster? For a shitty fucking... $200 for a fucking poster? Are you out of your mind? He's like, I normally charge between six and $800. $200 cheap. I'm like, I don't give a fuck what you charge other people. I'm not paying $200, cunt. I'll pay you $100. How does $100 sound? Does that sound good? He's like, fucking all right. The problem is, when you're not paying the cunt properly, he very rarely gets to your work when you want him to. It's not his first priority, let's just put it that way. And I have some deadlines for Edinburgh I need to fucking get to. Well, the deadline for my poster was actually the 29th of July, and it's now the 4th of July. Happy 4th of July to all you fucking seppos out there. All the fucking seppos. The septic tanks, the fucking yanks. Do you Americans know we call you Seppos? I think I mentioned it once, like maybe 960 fucking episodes ago. Anyway, Matt O'Neill, fucking my graphic designer, also my comedian friend. I feel like our relationship is getting a little bit stretched by the demands I'm putting on him for my posters and flyers and all that sort of shit. Also, I'm not paying him well and I'm asking for quite a lot. So anyway, I have this fucking poster due and I'm like, Matt, I fucking need it. And he's like, I'm in hospital, man. (laughs) I'm like, you're what? He's like, yeah, I've got kidney stones. This is about three days ago. He's like, I'm in hospital. I got kidney stones. I'm in fucking a world of pain and I'm just on fucking painkillers. And my immediate thought is like, how the fuck is he going to get my poster to me? And my second thought is like, I hope he's all right. God, I hope he's all right so he can get my poster to me. Like, I do care, but he's put me in a fucking tough spot. His fucking hospitalization put me in a real fucking pinch. Anyway, he gets out and starts sending me some fucking mock-ups of the poster he's designed. And I just send back, I just need two things changed. I just want a little bit of this and a little bit of that. That's all. I'm also messaging the cunt from Edinburgh just going, can you hold off like one more day? My dude just got out of fucking hospital. He's going to send me the finished product tomorrow. Can you just give me one more day? And the dude in Edinburgh is like, yeah, sweet, but I fucking need it tomorrow. Otherwise, it's fucking off. This is just to get a fucking big poster on the wall of my venue. This is all it's for. It's for nothing else. Just one big poster, like a meter of boil. A meter by a meter of le boil. So that's all good. And then last night I messaged him and I'm like, hey, (laughs) Matt. Is there any chance you can send me that poster tonight, man? Because I really need to get it over to Edinburgh. And he messages me back like three hours going, Dude, I'm in bed. And I'm like, it's 7.30, cunt. What the fuck are you doing in bed at 7.30? I didn't say that. I'm like, all right, tomorrow morning? He's like, yeah, cool. I'll have it first thing tomorrow morning. So I wake up at 11 a.m. today and I'm like, hey, Matt... How's that poster looking? And really stretching the relationship now. It's not like it was before. You're not looking forward to each other's fucking messages. You're not sending some fucking screenshots to each other as some shit comedy lineup where everyone sucks and just shitting on all the comedians. This is like, hey, I need this. You don't want to do it, but I need it, and I don't want to pay you either. So this morning I'm like, hey, hey. <laughs> Matt, hey, how's things going, mate? What's news? What's happening? Uh, I try and, like, butter him up a little bit. It's very obvious, but 
How's the family? How's the kids, mate? How are things going? Anyway, uh, the poster. How is that looking? And he sent me a message back going, I'm back in hospital. (laughs) I'm back in fucking hospital and I need an operation. And I'm like, oh my God, he's not going to be able to get my poster to me today, is he? I fucking don't think he's getting my poster to me today. I'm like, fuck, I hope you're good, man. I hope you're doing well. When's the um operation? Do you know? Like, is there an ETD on the operation? And he's like, I don't know when the operation's going to be, but I've got to be in here until I have it. And I'm like, well, I guess I'm not getting my poster then. I couldn't even ask. How can you ask in that situation? It's impossible. I can't go, you know that poster that was like nine fucking rungs down on your to-do list? Is there any chance you can muscle your way out of the operation and get home and fucking just finish my poster, please? I didn't even say anything. It was heroic on my part. I was like, all right, don't worry about it. That picture you sent me of my poster, is there any way that can be blown up into poster size? He's like, that was just a screenshot. I'm like, all right, so I am truly fucked then. And he's like, what's the rush anyway? Why do you need it so quickly? I'm like, (laughs) I had a deadline five days ago. It was due five days ago. I've been pushing it. So anyway, I had to find an emergency graphic designer. And just so happens, fucking Super Kev from Canada, the man who made my fucking website. His missus is a graphic designer. He said, I'll fucking get your poster today. Send all the shit over and she'll whip something up for you. So hopefully I'm fucking saved. Graphic designers are really an important commodity for a comedian. You're just going to need one. You're going to need one on your side. So I haven't been able to relax for one second today. It's just been in the back of my mind. The fucking poster, the fucking flyers, the fucking poster, the poster. What are you going to do about the fucking poster? Anyway. Let's just move on to this week's Ask Boyle. It's Ask Boyle time. If you have a question you would like answered by one of the greatest minds of the generation, just head to my website, boylecomedy.com. Go to the section where it says drunk dial, leave an audio recording or, or fuck that off and send me an email to boylecomedy at gmail.com. So this week's question was sent in through the drunk dial. Let's give it a listen. Hey, Boyle. This is Bradley from Alberta, Canada. Question for you. Me and my lady, the old missus, we've been in the swingers lifestyle for a few months now. And every time we go, she keeps telling me that she's interested in guys with accents, specifically guys from the UK or Australia. So I'm wondering, how do I deal with the jealousy regarding your accents? And should I let her go if a good old bogan takes her away? Well, swinger, you have come to the right place. You fucking polyamorous fucking swinging cunts out there now, just fucking keep it in your pants, you fucking cunts. Trying to have your fucking cake and eat it as well. What happened to fucking good old-fashioned cheating? Just behind the back, (laughs) in the workplace, under the desk, in the fucking mop closet, behind the coffee machine. What happened to that? Now all these fucking couples are like, yeah, I don't mind watching my missus get plowed by (laughs) some fucking strange dude with a moustache. Girls are like, I wouldn't mind trying some pussy, a little bit of pussy, just, I'm not too sure, I might be bisexual. And the boyfriend or husband is like, yeah, I think you are bisexual, let's explore that. Let's explore your bisexuality. I've seen these couples out there trying to fucking pull in a third wheel as well. It's fucking a little bit seedy. It's not a little bit seedy, it's a lot seedy. I don't know what it's all about. Anyway, let's get to your question. First of all, your priorities aren't really fucking straight there. 
What are you more jealous of? Her getting plowed by someone in front of you or that she likes dudes with a different accent to yours? <laughs> I don't mind her sucking someone else's dick as long as she's not attracted to his accent. In this case, she's attracted to an Australian accent, which makes her a fucking complete nut job. The Australian accent is the fucking least sexy of all fucking accents. Fucking show me your tits, Cheryl. <laughs> I would fucking let her. Here's the thing about Australians, and I'm talking for every single fucking one of them. We are not the world's greatest lovers. We are not the French. We're not even the Germans. We're fucking drunk when we're like 12, 13, 14, and we lose our virginity. This is guys and girls. And then we're drunk. <laughs> for pretty much every other sexual encounter up until late 30s. I don't know how Canadians go, but fucking Aussie dudes are not renowned for our lovemaking. I would not consider an Australian dude a threat in like the swingers room anyway, but an Australian dude could nab your missus. She could end up with your missus because Australian dudes are pretty sweet. Australians have this idiotic charm that fucking women from around the world find adorable for like six months and then they realize, oh, there's nothing underneath it. <laughs> there's absolutely no depth of character there at all. He actually is an adorable moron. Bogans are a different story though. They don't have that fucking charm, that adorable charm, but they will fuck. <laughs> They've been fucking flat out since they were 12. They know what's going on. A bogan would do pretty good in a swingers room, but you've got no chance of losing your missus to a bogan. So you've got to be a little bit careful there. <laughs> I wouldn't let your missus anywhere near a fucking Australian. She's either going to get a fucking bogan and get plowed like she's never been plowed before, or you're going to get fucking a middle of the road fucking Australian, a fucking man that really has no idea what he is, who he is, where he is. But he's kind of funny and kind of charming in a way that fucking girls like for six months. And he may steal your missus off you. So beware of Australian dudes. I don't know about the younger generation. I've heard the younger generation are just fuckboys. But I can guarantee, even if they are, they still have no fucking idea what they're doing. The problem is Australians are drunk all through their like fucking childhood, teenage years young adult years, adult years, like we know we want puss, but, <laughs> and we're not bad at getting it, but once we get it, we're not too sure what to do with it. It's a little bit of a mystery to us. There needs to be like a fucking YouTube fucking tutorial, pussy for fucking Australians, because we've got no fucking idea. And a lot of the people I know, if they heard this, I'd be like, fucking speak for yourself, Boyle. And I am to a certain extent. But I fucking also know you guys have no fucking idea what you're doing. You're just fucking throwing it in there and hoping. So I would say let her fucking go for an Aussie. And if she does leave you for an Australian, all you need to remember is that in six months, she'll be fucking regretting that decision. She'll be sending you some text messages just going, I think I made a fucking mistake. And you'll be like, damn right you did. I've got an Australian girlfriend now. And you'll be in even more trouble. Because if Australian guys are fucking bad, I don't even think Australian guys are that bad. I would put Australian dudes up there in the fucking top echelon. Not, <laughs> not in intelligence and depth of character and anything to do with like intelligence. But as like a fucking like dude, like as a man, Australians are pretty solid. But a fucking Australian women... They are the world's biggest fucking nightmare. Actually, Australian dudes are fucked as well. What am I talking about? Anyway, fucking let her go for it. That's what I say. And when your fucking missus is getting plowed by this Australian dude, just fucking whisper in his ear, this is only happening because Boyle said so. Anyway, I hope that fucking helped, Brattles. That's it for tonight. If you're enjoying the podcast, give it a share around and I'll see you the fuck later.